I really can't tell you that what it was worth. I don't know if there's so many uh, variable uh, uh, variations of uh, information on that. But anyway, uh, do do your own study. Now, I got that amount from somewhere in, in one of my studies. It should have been 1800 instead of 18 dollars. That sells a whole lot there. Amen. All right, let's stand for just a moment. Let's read from our text this morning. Please ask me. Chapter 8, verses 1 through 5. And let's read together. Who is like a wise man, and who knows the interpretation of the thing? And man's wisdom makes his face shine, and the sternness of his face is changed. Obey authorities for God's sake. I say, keep the king's commandments for the sake of your oath to God. Do not be hasty to go from his presence. Do not take your stand for an evil thing, for he does whatever pleases him. Where the word of the king is, there is power. And who may say to him, what are you doing? He who keeps his command will experience nothing marvel. And a wise man's heart concerns both time and judgment. Father, we ask that you bless this time this morning as we come to look into your holy word and what it would represent for us today as your children and those that are on the way to being your children. Uh, we pray, Father, that uh, we learn and grow from this and it becomes a part of our life that we would be uh, better children for you and better uh, people for the society uh, that we live in. Thank you for loving us and caring so much for us that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for us on the cross, that we might have a relationship with you, a everlasting relationship with you, and assure ourselves of eternity and heaven one day. And it is in Jesus' name we pray, and the church says, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Now, if you look in your Bible, you might find a heading that talks about part of these verses about uh, maybe civil duty, obeying the law, etc. Um, I hope you've already noticed this from the title of the message for today that it comes from a very familiar uh, passage from uh, James chapter 1 verse 22. And it, it says what? Be ye doers of the word, not just hearers. And that's obviously uh, uh, enough in itself to get our attention is to how is it is that I'm supposed to live this life and uh, that God has called each and every one of us that, uh, that are, are part of uh, uh, his, his kingdom. Uh, interesting that, that the theme of change provides for us uh, some practical uh, Christian faith. And so I, I tell you what, I encourage you to read James. You can do it all in one setting. It's not but five chapters. Years ago, uh, when we were stationed at the Pentagon, and, uh, and we attended the church in Arlington. There was a lady there uh, who memorized the whole book of James and in its entirety. And it was interesting to sit back when she would do this without the Bible in hand, and you take your Bible and you go along with her, and she would not miss a beat. She knew the book of James in its entirety. And so it was, again, interesting to see, hear her recite it from uh, her heart. I imagine though now that Miss Betty's in heaven enjoying her relationship with God and maybe rubbing the elbows with James. I don't know what she might be doing up there right now, but uh, I wonder if they were comparing the text to one another, see how much he might remember uh, to what she uh, learned uh, from heart. Um, back to our text uh, for today. Within uh, these uh, few verses, uh, we are uh, given instructions that will help us uh, to live, uh, again, a practical uh, Christian life. And, and so I, I would say that as we go, and, we, and you've already read them, but I would say that as we go through them again, it would be something that we each would want. It would be something that would better ourselves personally, but certainly better ourselves for our relationship with God and our relationship with other people. And so I want to I go back into that again. I don't know if... Uh, Brother uh, Colin had put it up on the screen one verse at a time. Uh, but if you've got your own Bible, please look at it. If you're taking notes, it's going to be very simple this morning. It doesn't have to be, uh, be uh, so complicated as we read God's Word and try to learn how to apply it to our life. And 
that. So anyway, let's let's get through it again from the verse. First verse it says, "Who is like a wise man, and who knows the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom makes his face shine, and the sternness of his face is changed." So the first instruction that we need to glean from this is that uh, we are to we are to be wise. Uh, in the last church that I pastored, uh, there was a man who who did not do a lot of talking. And, uh, and I noticed this uh, after a period of time that uh, it just didn't give much in conversation. So I kind of commented uh, about him one day to another member of the church as to why he was so quiet. And he said, well, he, he really kind of takes it all in. He just kind of massages everything that comes and uh, yeah, I'm not sure what he does with it all, but, uh, but when he did speak, we are to listen. Uh, he was careful with his words, um, and when he did offer a reply or advice to something, it was worth listening to. Uh, again, he was wise with his words. And I've said this over and over and over again, I'm sure. Um, knowledge is great. Knowledge is great, but uh, wisdom is, is better. Uh, it's what we do with that knowledge that defines who we are. And listen, as we can say that we know what God wants of us, but we're not so wise if we don't apply ourselves to His instructions and, and His desires for us. And by the way, if, if God were to tell me I have a desire for you in this in this manner, I think it would be enough that we would be what He's saying and want to uh, comply with it. And certainly. The instructions that God gives us, the commands that He gives us, are things that He intends for us to take to heart to, and to make it a part of our life. And, and you've heard this before. God has really given us a whole bunch of suggestions in the Bible. He's done what? He's given us commandments to live by. Uh, and so to use, to apply anything that we learn from God's Word, uh, yes, it's knowledge, but it's wise of us to put it to action is wise of us to apply it to our life. The verse 2 again says, I keep, I say, keep the king's commandment for the sake of your oath to God. And so the second instruction that we're given, look at the word keep, is to that we are to be obedient. And it sort of kind of goes along with verse 1, I believe, and to some sense, uh, we are called to be obedient to God's word. Here, here is what we should learn. This thing about obedience is a very serious matter to God. Um, I've not read anywhere, as I study the Bible, uh, where He gives uh, any uh, any uh, exemptions, if you will. Uh, we're all called pretty much to the same thing in the sense of generally how we live our life, and and He hasn't looked at anybody uh, regarded uh, their makeup in life, how much they uh, own, and, and uh, uh, whether they're male or female, uh, 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 it, it, there's instructions that he expects us to use, and he doesn't give any uh, exemptions in doing it. Now, obviously obedience is a serious matter of God, but disobedience is a serious matter of God as well. Uh, most of you know our dog Daisy, and uh, if you don't stop by the house and meet Daisy, she she will greet you. How many have been by there and she greeted you? How many have felt like she was going to take your head off? Uh, Brother Gary, uh, Brother Gary, you scared the lot of moon of them all or something. <laughs> uh, I remember the first time that y'all know the thing a lot of moon. How short she is, it's an actual picture of her. First time Brother Gary walked in my office, man, I thought he was going to I tell him back out there, he's a little different. Anyway, he's a very much of a guest. But anyway, Bill and I were all proud of our dog. And, uh, and we've had her for about 10 years. And uh, we got her, I guess, for about six months or so after we got here to Cameron. And, uh, when she doesn't want to obey us, we, we kind of get frustrated. 
And we get excited when she obeys us. I mean, we get tickled that she actually does what she tells us to do. To, well, she tells us to do too. Uh, well, that's the truth of that. At 8.30 at night, she knows she's supposed to have a bone. Come by the house around 8.30 and watch her go into action. She is telling us it's time to give her a bone. She knows how to tell time. And we get excited about that too because she's trained in that respect. But we do get frustrated when she doesn't, do, when she doesn't do what we have trained her to do. And, and, and I wonder how it is with God. Though. I wonder how it is uh, with God. Does, does he get excited when we obey him? I suspect he does. Just like we as parents get excited when our children do things that we train them to do. And, and we're just excited that they're taking it in and, and they're accepting what we teach them. And I can imagine that's God. That he gets excited when he looks down at his, his young ones and his, and you know, and I've said this before, maybe a big smile comes on his face. I don't know. <coughs> I, I, I can just imagine this. Look at her, my boy. Look at my girl, my daughter, my son. Look at him obeying my word to them. Does he get frustrated when we don't obey his word? I, I can imagine that he, it saddens him when we don't obey him. And so obedience is a big thing with God. Verse 3 gives us this, Do not be hasty to go from his presence. Do not take your stand for an evil thing, for he does whatever pleases him. And so what we believe from this one is our instruction that we need to be need to be loyal. And church, we need more of loyalty. We need more loyalty to this church. People who belong to this church or part of this church to be more loyal to the ministries of this church. Uh, and which I really believe, really believe it brings a lot of respect to people in leadership. I'm not just talking about myself. I'm talking about people that you you out there who who study and prepare for for Sunday school or any other ministry that we're involved in. And if you're like me and you're in a leadership position, you know, you, you can have a smile on your face when things start to happen and, and people are coming. Hey, look, I get excited on Wednesday night. And, and I know it's just a small group of people that come, but I, we, we, we've been filling up outside that room lately. And that's a big thing to, to me. And it might not be but 13 people or 15 people. But it's exciting. And, and I think there's perhaps uh, you know, something to learn about loyalty, not only to Couple Sunday morning as we are here, but also to the other ministries of the church. Uh, how about a loyalty uh, to the home? A loyalty to one another as it applies. You know, loyalty is one of um, the scout laws. Of course, obedient is as well. It says it's a scout that is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, uh, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. We've ever had anybody part of Boy Scouts? Cub Scouts? Anybody? Girl Scouts? Anybody want to be? <laughs> Does the Girl Scouts have something like that too? Similar? The same thing? Okay, yeah. All of that means something, and it should to a, to a scout. And it's interesting, again, that this is, you know, this is not a message about the scout, but, but I've heard this say about the character of someone before, uh, that uh, as describing that person, that person being loyal. But you know, our loyalty can be challenged at times can be tested at times. If things don't go the way we want them to go as far as perhaps even with our relationship with God, um, with somebody else, then our loyalty might be tested. But the question is, is are, are we loyal? Uh, and if we are, do we know that we can depend on God? And we can. Another question that is though about our his Wondering if he could depend on us, because he knows what that answer is. But it might be a question we would ask ourselves. Can he depend on us? Am I loyal to him? Verse 4 says this, Where the word of the 
king is, there is power. And who may say to him, what are you doing? Really, the first instruction here is to be Goliath. I'm going to define the word Goliath. Simply, it means worthy of confidence. It means trustworthy. Again, it sounds like I'm giving a message on the scouts, but I'm not. Trustworthy happens to be one of their laws or one of their commitments. But listen to this, can, can God be trusted? Can he be trusted? Proverbs 18, 24 tells us this, a man who has friends must himself be what? A friend. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Who are we talking about? Yeah. You see, God is dependable. He is, sometimes we don't think he is, but he is, he's a right on time God. And because sometimes we think that he's not, we should be careful that we would not give up on him. And that again, that he should know that he can depend on us. And so we need to be reliant. We need to be trustworthy. We need to, we need to be dependable as God is. And from our fifth verse, the last instruction says, he, he, who, he who keeps his commandments will experience nothing harmful. And a wise man's heart discerns both time and judgment. That last instruction is that we need to be discerning. I believe it's a trait that we, we all need. Listen to how the dictionary defines that word for us. It says to perceive as with sight or mind, to recognize as separate and different, to distinguish or discriminate something. Interesting to use that word discriminate. It means keenness of judgment, insight. Let me tell you, in the day and time when, when there are people, even churches that are, are redefining God's word, we, we need discernment. We need discernment. When there is a, a mockery of God's word, we, we need discernment. When Satan is trying his best to tear churches apart, and he's doing a good job, there's a lot of churches that are closed up. Uh, I, you know, all you do, need to do is read about it. I was trying to show Brother David Michael a church uh, on the way to do the hospital the other day, and they must have tore it down. Couldn't find it. Tried to show it on the way up there and back, and I couldn't find it. It was an old dilapidated church. Sad in a, in a community, a resident, people living all around, and this church is falling apart. I mean, they, they didn't even convert it to something else to make it useful. And apparently, they must have tore it down. But their church is falling apart. Uh, family is falling apart. Other relationships that are, that are even founded on the principles of God. And so church, we, we need discernment. We need discernment. I pray for discernment. In fact, I, I, you can't go wrong in asking God for that. And I, I think there's probably a gift of it. It's going to be, be nice to, to have that, but I think God has given me an opportunity to be able to weigh inside things. But he's asked us all to do that. He's asked us all to, to, to weigh inside things. And, but how is it that we could have an, an applied discernment? We can do it by knowing God, for one. We can do it by knowing His Word. Uh, and if we don't, and some people don't, they, they've fallen for everything else that seems in this world that's going on. And I know this because uh, there are some people I know that have fallen for that. Uh, I think it's an old statement that if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. And it's happened to well-meaning people who, who believe they have a connection with God and, and all of a sudden because they don't know enough about who God is and His Word, somebody will come along and interject something that just sounds pretty good and sounds kind of Godish, if you will. And they don't discern it. They take it. They run with it. 
and it's really the opposite of what God would want with them. But we can know, we can know God, we can know Him, we can know His, His Word by reading His Word. There's people that have been drawn to the ways of Satan. And again, what is even more puzzling is that they once apply themselves to God's Word. And I'll tell you what, this must be frustrating uh, to see people that that uh, he would love to call his own, that perhaps have claimed him as Lord and Savior, falling off to the wayside, falling into other things in life that it has nothing to do with God and what he wants for them. Are you asking God to help you discern the spirits? And the reason I would ask the question about that is because we are instructed to discern the spirits. In fact, we read this in 1 John 4, 1. It says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. And watch this. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. And may I add, into the church as well, unfortunately. And so we need to be, we need to be discerning. The Bible tells us that from our text we need to be wise. We need to be obedient, be loyal, be reliant, be discerning. And we say, well, can we do these things? Well, <laughs> I've always said if, if God is asking us, instructing us to do something, obviously we can do these things. Because God would not ask us to do something that he would not help us to make happen in our life. And it's, it's not only because God wants us to do something uh, that, that is for his purpose, but obviously it is for our purpose, our relationship with him, our relationship and our relationship with others. And any time that we obey his word, it, it has a greater uh, value than sometimes we give it than just saying, well, I've just been obedient to God. It's like the old illustration, why do you have a stop sign at the intersection? Because somebody wants you to stop. Well, yeah, but why is it they want you to stop? It might be a, what, a lifesaver. If you run a stop sign and somebody else is running, guess what's going to happen? An accident. So it ain't just for just to say I'm going to stop. There's a reason why. God's word to us is not just to get us to do something. There's a, a, not a reason behind it. It has to do with our personal relationship with him and how we're to walk in that relationship. With him. So God would not call us to, to do anything that we would, not, we would not be able to do. He would help enable us to do that. And yes, it always begins in one way. It's never been different for anybody at all. I don't care where you're from, your financial status, your upbringing, it begins in this way with a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's it. That's it. God may have a, a character in your sinfulness, if you will. He may prolong your life through sinfulness for the very purpose that one day you would say yes to Him. And that's God. And I know that for myself personally for Him carried me. And I thank God that He did. And He gave me an opportunity to, to come to my senses. And, but look what happens though when we do come to our senses. We begin to take on what we hear from God's Word if we're sincere about our relationship with Him. And as the text says, we become a part of who God is and what He wants for us. We're not just listeners. We are doers of God's Word and what He wants to do us. But it begins with a relationship with Jesus Christ. And as we grow, we put these practices, these areas in, uh, in place in our life when we grow in them. But the question is, are we, are we, are we, are we even on our way, are we doers of the word uh, and not just a hearer? You know, you have to answer that question for yourself today, folks. And our congregation is low today. I can tell you who sits in that area right there, the whole entire family. We miss them today. There's a road missing back there. I don't know who sits there, but I'll figure it out later. But, 
But everybody, me standing here, we have to kind of discern, if you're looking for discernment, is where we are and what God has called us to do. Or where people are going, yeah, I got it. Yeah, 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 I got it. I've heard 